yeah now we can hear you uh, uh, so now our uh, next speaker of today's session uh, dr iqbal uh, is here with us Uh, Dr. Iqbal is uh, the uh, assistant professor in uh, travel tourism and hospitality management. He is in uh, Calicut University, uh, Brahmapur, Odisha. And uh, the topic of Dr. Iqbal is uh, what is tourism? Ecotourism. Yeah, what is ecotourism? So ecotourism is uh, the core of the whole whole our program. So I welcome Dr. Iqbal uh, uh, to this session. And uh, uh, Dr. Iqbal, uh, we request you to please uh, uh, give your lecture on the specific, uh, this ecotourism. What is ecotourism? So all students are waiting excited to see the first live session. Thank you, Dr. Iqbal. Thank you very much, uh, It's indeed a privilege and honor for me uh, to be the part of this program. Uh, though we are not physically uh, present, but uh, now the new normal is uh, we have to be uh, on the virtual mode and maybe for uh, future, we may also have to use the blended form of learning wherein we cannot be in a position to be physically more active. So we have to use the technology and uh, other things for our, uh, you know, conti for, to continue our uh, teaching learning or uh, whatever the process, even the, even the virtual tours are now being uh, organized. Even the Ministry of Tourism has started it. So without uh, uh, going into too much details and without wasting any time, I know the participants must be tired also. So I will straightforward come to the topic. Uh, uh, if you allow me to share my screen, mm -hmm. I have a small presentation. Okay, now you are the co-host and you can share your screen. Okay. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is black. It's black. Yeah, it's black. Oh, it is so. It should not be black. Virinderji, uh, I think there is some problem. Yeah. Uh, can I do one thing? I will share my presentation with you and you will then uh, share it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. I will do that because I don't know what is the problem. I will send it to your email. Huh? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, now now we can see. Now we can see your presentation. Is it? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we okay, okay. okay, then it's okay. okay. It is visible now, huh? Perfect, visible. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, a very uh, good evening and uh, uh, Julie. Uh, to my uh, friends in Ladakh. Uh, I know that temperature must be very cold there. And uh, I am here in Odisha and uh, fan is there. AC though I have uh, closed it, but fan is still there. So it's uh, hot over here and I know the temperature there, it must be very cold. So I, uh, my, I, I am, uh, you know, it, it's indeed an honor uh, to uh, speak to the uh, uh, people especially my friends there. I have a lot of friends there. Last year, I was as a sort of, uh, you know, a guest. So this time as a teacher, I will be uh, talking about uh, something about ecotourism. 
So my topic will be uh, what is ecotourism? So before uh, going into the details of the ecotourism, so let me first of all uh, ask a simple question. You all may not reply, but you can just uh, you know write in the chat box. What do you understand by the term tourism? You must have you know, uh, attended the first lecture of Dr. Pawan. I think his main topic was what is tourism. So if you can write in the chat box so that I can, uh, I will get an idea. I hope participants are writing. Uh, nine participants answer. have raised hands. Yeah. Okay, okay. Huh. Can you please just type what is tourism? Okay, okay. Traveling of people from one. Okay, very nice, very nice. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there are a lot of responses from the participants. So uh, let me now just come to the uh, come to the main term, tourism. What we understand by the tourism participant, there are responses. Now you can stop. You can stop writing. It's okay. It's fine. So we understand tourism as a movement of people, movement of people from the one place to the another place, or we say from the normal place of their residence to some unknown place and the main purpose being to get away from the day-to-day -day activities like boredom or uh, you know sometimes it may be related to uh, climate so on and so forth as people in the plains prefer to visit to the hills when it is very uh, hot there or people from the hills may prefer to visit to the plains in order to uh, you know, get away from the cold or the severe weather conditions. So in general, we say that tourism, that, that kind of movement, that kind of travel, it is called as the mass tourism or the conventional form of the tourism. Conventional form of tourism or mass tourism of late has had a lot of impacts because the first and the foremost element of tourism on which tourism depends, it is nature. And nature gets the the first impact is on the nature. The impact, it can be positive, impact can be negative. So from the positive, from the, uh, from the perspective of positive impacts, we, we understand that tourism generates economy. There is a foreign currency, we earn money. There are employment opportunities, ample number of employment opportunities. Uh, there is uh, conservation, preservation, so on and so forth. But of late, it has been found, especially after the World War II, when tourism uh, received the impetus, tourism started growing across the globe. There were a lot of negative impacts of the tourism. Those negative impacts were mostly on the nature, because nature is the first and the foremost element of tourism. And at the global level, people started thinking about it, that how, what should be done to stop this mass movement or we see the mass migration of the people. You might have seen the hill stations in your place also, Ladakh. When I was last time there, people were saying that we don't want, we don't want huge number of tourists coming here uh, and we don't want buildings being constructed here. That is a good positive sign. Otherwise, if you see other um, uh, mountain areas, hilly areas like Himachal Pradesh, like Uttarakhand, or for that matter, some other places, even Kashmir also, you'll find that there's a mushrooming growth of hotels, right? Hotels are there and uh, people have even started, uh, you know, uh, accommodation in their uh, homes also. For that matter, uh, Ministry of Tourism is providing the compensation also. So there is one thing in mind that we want to earn more and more. And this happens, especially in case of the mountainous regions like Ladakh or for that matter in Kashmir, leaving aside Himachal Pradesh or Uttarakhand, wherein we have tourism only for four months or for that matter six months so we try uh, you know stakeholders especially the local community they try to uh, get more and more uh, try to have more and more income from tourism 
And when there is also the uh, uh, mantra that uh, the economy of Jammu and Kashmir or Ladakh is dependent more on tourism, that is a separate issue. We cannot we cannot dis we cannot be discussing about that issue. So uh, so people started you know there is a there is a sort of uh, uh, thinking in the people uh, that yeah we have to earn a lot of money, but contrarily it has its impacts on the nature. As I told you that nature is the first and the foremost element of the tourism. We see flora and fauna or the whole biodiversity. It has its, uh, tourism has its impact and that impact is negative. So for, in order to counter those negative impacts, there started a movement in the late 1980s. It was, it was about the environment. People started thinking that too much of tourism is, is not too good for a particular destination, especially when we talk of the destinations which are new, as we say, virgin destinations. We use in tourism terminology this term. Uh, uh, Dr. Iqbal, so, sorry, I'm disturbing you. Hmm. Uh, actually, there, there is only the first slide we can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will, I will, I will, I will go on. I will go. On. Okay, don't worry, okay. don't worry. I thought. I, <laughs> no, I no, thought. no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> okay there, sorry. There are slides are there. I will come to the main uh, point, and slide will be there. Don't worry. Okay, okay. I'm extremely sorry. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you for. Uh, no, no, no issues. So uh, uh, we say that uh, such impacts, uh, these negative impacts, most of the negative impacts, they had a there is there was a concern in 1980s, and people started movements. There were a lot of books were written about the impacts of tourism on nature. For example, Silent Spring is one of the books. You can just note down it, Silent Spring. S-I-L-E-T-S-P-R-I-N-G, Silent Spring. It is written by Rackel Carson, R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Rackel, C-A-R-S-O-N. Students can note down it. Rackel Carson has written a book that is called as Silent Spring. So it was related to the negative impacts of the mass tourism. In order to counter the negative impacts of the tourism, uh, stakeholders, especially scholars, researchers, or practitioners, they came up with a term that is called as alternative tourism. So there are the now two terminologies. One is the mass tourism, and another is the alternative tourism. In alternative tourism, for example, you might be nowadays hearing the word sustainable development sustainable tourism, sustainable development, sustainable development of tourism. So these are the terminologies which are nowadays be, we hear across the globe. So this alternative tourism, it had concept of sustainability at the core that tourism practices should be sustainable. Sustainable means we should sustain for a, for a longer period should not be that it's for three or four months we earn our money and destroy the nature. No, it should be the longer, for the longer period of the time where our future generations can also benefit from the tourism. So in that case, we see alternative tourism. One, uh, sustainable tourism is a whole concept. And in alternative tourism, there were a lot of terminologies, which I will show you in the slide later on, like uh, ecotourism, nature tourism, wildlife tourism, so on and so forth. These terminologies were uh, alternative tourism. So the, the notion was that this form of tourism will help uh, us uh, to counter the negative impacts of mass tourism. So now ecotourism. Huh. Now it is visible, Virendarji? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So now I will come to the main term that is uh, ecotourism. So I have uh, given the definition. You uh, all the students can note down the name of the organization, International Ecotourism Organization, uh, International Ecotourism Society, TIES, T I E S. You can later on when you get the time, you can visit the website and check the TIES website. So the definition of ecotourism was given by times. What is the definition as it is there? You can see on the screen. Responsible travel to natural areas that conserves the environment, sustains the well-being of the local people, and involves interpretation and education. This is the definition which was given by International Ecotourism Society in 2015. Previous definition was given in uh, 1990 or 95 though this organization came into being in 1990s itself. This is an international global organization. There were two points. One is education, 
education and interpretation two points were uh, incorporated which were not previously there uh, and education it is supposed to be inclusive of both the staff and the guests that staff we can say those who are involved in the eco tourism activities now i will try to uh, you know explain this terminology a term eco tourism the first word used is responsible travel that means the traveler or the tourist rather we should not use the word traveler tourist tourist who is visiting a destination a particular destination let us for that example say zanskar as early in the, in the morning uh, there was a talk about the zanskar zanskar emerging as the new uh, tourism destination so let us say people are visiting zanskar since there is no tourism we are presuming since there is no tourism in the zanskar zanskar is a new tourist destination and of course we want to earn some foreign exchange some currency we want to get the employment opportunities so on so forth uh, so we don't want to have that kind of tourism which would have the negative effect which i earlier told which would have the negative so we want the tourists who are the responsible tourists so responsible tourist can only uh, can be a person who knows what to do and what not to do at a tourist destination or for whom we can provide as the definition itself says we can provide some uh, education or interpretation as he as he or she when visiting a destination like zanskar so there are certain rules and regulations to be followed these rules and regulations are not only for the tourist but these rules and regulations are for the people of the zanskar also so we need to understand that what should what you can do here and what you cannot do here so in that case we find tourist to be responsible now there emerges another term responsible responsible tourism and eco tourism these are the two terminologies now you will find if you try to search on the uh, google there is a kerala you know kerala is one of the states of our country one of the developed states of our country uh, uh, they are following responsible tourism practices you will find uh, one village kumarakom k u m a r k o a m kumarakom it is one of the best kept responsible tourism destination in india and eco tourism in itself in india started in kerala there is one destination that is called as thanmala t h e n n m a l a so i am saying these words in order so that you can just you know uh, write down the words properly since we are in a uh, we are in a teaching class so uh, thanmala is the first uh, developed eco tourism destination in uh, india thanmala is in kerala you can later on search in the google so now eco and responsible it seems one and the same thing because when we try, when we when we study the definition definition in itself says that it is responsible travel i happened to go to the kumara cop two three years back the person who is looking after the responsible tourism practices he is one of my friends i told him that what do you what do you understand by responsible tourism and eco tourism is there any difference between the two he said that so no, there is no difference between the two but we say eco tourism is a theoretical part and responsible tourism is the practical part so whatever right now for example we are having a lecture i am delivering the lecture so this is a theoretical part i may have the information from one source or the other source and i am giving the information to you so this is a theoretical part now we have to implement it in zanskar right we have to implement it in zanskar so that is the responsible part for example one example i will quote if i am coming to the zanskar and i happen to see some plants that is a simple example and i start plucking the plants i am the tourist i don't know the value of these plants they may they may be medicinal plants you might be knowing about the value of those plants so you will say that please don't pluck the plants they are very important right so now that is the responsibility on your part so you are a responsible host now 
I will now behave as a responsible guest. So when I see any kind of plant or herb or shrub, so I will not pluck it because I know now that it is important. It has a value. So I should not disturb it. So that is the responsible travel. And eco-tourists need to be responsible. Whenever they are visiting any destination, they need to be responsible. For example, that's how they can be responsible. This was the one example, like uh, I quoted the example of these plants. Another example can he has to respect, he or she has to respect the local culture. For example, we in Ladakh have a different uh, lifestyle. We have our own lifestyle. So it should be that the tourist who is coming there, he should also respect that lifestyle. And we also should respect our own lifestyle. We should not imitate. For example, if you, if I say that you people are there in Ladakh, some uh, you are wearing, you know, uh, jackets and warm cloths. And here in Odisha, it's hot. I am having the cloths uh, which are uh, which are feasible for the cold. So if I happen to visit Ladakh, and I will say that I will come wear the cold cloths, and I will, uh, you know, as we have the European tourists, they have their own uh, uh, living style. So that cannot be acceptable to the uh, to the climatic conditions in one sense, and it may not be acceptable to the local uh, culture also. So that means an eco-tourist needs to be responsible first. As and when he is responsible, uh, then only uh, we call that uh, person as an eco-tourist, right? This is, this is the main definition which was given by the ties, and I tried to uh, give some background about it now this is the this is what i was talking about this figure if you see the figure i was talking about that tourism it can be a mass tourism earlier that i told you it can be a mass tourism which is a convention which is called also conventional tourism or it can be an alternative tourism then there are the different branches of the alternative tourism this is that uh, this is one uh, figure which is given by one scholar uh mecca uh he has given this uh, uh, definition, the two forms. And in alternative tourism, he says that all these forms like cultural tourism, educational tourism, scientific tourism, agricultural tourism, nature tourism, adventure tourism, these are all called as, uh, the, these forms of the alternative tourism are called as ecotourism, or he has used the word nature tourism. Is it clear? Now, if we go to the uh, background of the term ecotourism, so we first have to understand in simple terms, ecotourism, we say that it is a low key, minimal impact interpretative tourism, which has a main focus on the three things. One is conservation, another thing is understanding, and another thing is appreciation of environment and culture, as I was uh, talking about. So this is the main focus of the ecotourism. It's a minimal impact. Mi minimal impact means it should have it should have minimal negative impacts will be there, but it should have negative minimal negative impacts, which we uh, which which may not be in the case of mass tourism because mass tourist is normally coming to a destination for entertainment, for pleasure, for relaxation, and uh, similar things. On the other hand, eco tourist needs to be conscious about these things. Conservation and understanding means the local culture, understanding of local culture, understanding of local environment, so on and so forth. Is it clear? I think someone is uh, doing something in my presentation or it is happening it, it itself. Virinder ji? Okay, okay. So uh, now, if we see uh, the term, uh, Virinder ji, hello. Hello. Anyway, uh, if we see the 
term, the term ecotourism, uh, it was uh, quoted by the famous uh, scholar, researcher. His name is Sabalos Lascourin uh, in 1800 and in 1981. 1981, he started using the term. This is the historical background of the term ecotourism. Ecoturismo ecologico. This is the first uh, term he used, ecoturismo ecologico, for all the forms of the ecological tourism, right? So all, all those forms which are related to environment or ecology, they were called as turismo ecologico. ecologico. And then in 1983, this term was changed to a short form that is ecoturismo. So this is the person who is responsible for coining the term ecotourism, Hector Sabalos Lascorin. So then in 1984, this word ecotourismo, it was found in a written form in a journal, American journal, American birds. It was found in written form there. Then in 1987, the first definition of this term, ecotourism, we found in the literature. And it was, there was a paper that was named as the future of ecotourism. It appeared in one of the journals, Mexican Journal. Uh, Mexican journal. So uh, have, uh, this person, the Sebalos Lascorin, he was the uh, author of this uh, uh, article of this paper, who used this term first in the literature. So what he said, if we now, the first definition I gave you, it was by the ties. And the next important definition, which is there, which is given by the father of this term, uh, ecotourism, Sabalos Lascorin, he says that it is a form of travel in which the natural environment is the primary focus. And it is this element which provides us with a simple, yet core starting point in understanding the ecotourism phenomenon, particularly as a specific form of the alternative tourism. Now, again, there are two things which he has, uh, which even Sabalos Lascorin has discussed. One is related to environment, and another is that it is an alternative to the mass tourism. So from this, we clearly understand that the central point of ecotourism remains it has two basic uh, facts. The two basic facts it includes, it involves travel to those places which are unspoiled. That means which are natural or where tourists have not visited or tourists might have visited. So we may try to conserve that place, conserve those places. So uh, uh, that is also related to ecotourism. And another is that the travel, the traveler, who is visiting the place, it should be primarily uh, related to a natural environment. So that means tourists, eco-tourists who are visiting to a destination, that destination needs to be, uh, to be natural in its setting. Natural uh, as well as it should possess the resources like cultural resources. These are the, these are the two important uh, things. So now what we, uh, this, this was just about the background brief background of the term uh, ecotourism and what it all involves. So from this, what we get, we get two things. One is that tourism can be mass tourism or alternative tourism. And another is the impacts of the tourism can be negative, positive, can be negative. So where we talk of negative impacts, those are related to the environment. As I told you that, environment or nature, it is the first and the foremost thing on which the whole phenomenon of tourism depends. So we need to promote the concept of ecotourism. The central point of the whole process of ecotourism is conservation or preservation. Conservation and preservation of natural resources, not only natural resources, but also cultural resources. A question might arise here that is ecotourism only related to nature? It's not like that. Is ecotourism related to only those places where tourists have not visited? No, it's not that. Though the central point remains that, but 
it is also related to those places uh, for example in case of tourism we have developed tourist places we have underdeveloped tourist places and we have those places which are not yet on the tourist map as the case of zanskar might be on the other hand lada leh might be a developed tourist destination and there might be other destinations in the in the adjoining areas of leh those are underdeveloped tourist destination though the primary focus of eco tourism is visiting those destinations which are uh, not yet visited so we need to preserve those destinations on the other hand it can be visiting to the destinations which are developed but which have negative impacts of the mass tourism so we need to control or mitigate those negative impacts in order to sustain the tourism for our future generation now the question arises question arises what can eco tourism do for example in eco tourism we say that we have the main focus is on conservation or preservation so we need to uh, just a second just a second just a second please yeah sure ha uh, please sorry someone please. has come so i have to just open the door no uh, problem Huh. Okay. Uh, I don't know what is happening to my presentation. Is someone doing it uh, there, uh, yeah. or is it? No, actually, uh, someone is uh, doing this. So <laughs> Achha, I, check. No <laughs> yeah. I, I got it. The students in Ladakh are very active, so they can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. So uh, I will just take not take too much time. I know they are very much exhausted. So I will just five five minutes more. I will conclude. Uh, is it okay virinder ji yeah yeah sure definitely sir okay i, I can understand that uh, you know uh, they must be tired and it's cold uh, there uh, they have uh, someone is misusing the share it's not called misuse uh, it, <laughs> he, might, he or she might be playing with the slides uh, okay no problem sir please restrict the access to okay ye sab logo ne kuch likha hua hai theek hai okay so i was saying that now uh, now the question arises if we try to restrict the movement of tourists we don't want mass tourists to a particular destination what will happen how we will earn the econ uh, income how we will earn the foreign exchange how we will earn the currency agar main thoda sa apna hindi bhasha ka use karu hum kaise apna rozgar kamayenge jaise people of ladakh might say people of zanskar might say that sir you are saying eco tourism to usse tourist kam aa jayenge hum apna economy hum apna job opportunities kahan se aayenge hamare paas to koi aur job opportunity hai nahi hum kahi ja nahi sakte what can we do so the answer is that normally jab hum eco tourism ki baat karte hain there are the tour they are the tourists who are visiting the destination they are the high spenders i will quote an example for example in odisha odisha there are lot of destinations odisha is one of the uh, you i can say the best preserved destination it's a lot of greenery is here there are so many destinations here one destination here is you might be surprised you might not have heard the name daring badi it is called the mini kashmir of odisha it's a bit cold on the colder side the temperature right now there must be uh, not negative but it's down it might be 5 6 7 8 degrees i happen to visit that particular place and there are small cottages they have started small cottages and the charge to stay in one cottage is 6000 per night so that means 6000 rupees kon kharch karega 6000 rupees ek aam tourist kharch nahi karega जो एक दिन में आएगा पेंगोंग लेक देखने के लिए उसको वापस जाना है फॉर एग्जांपल श्रीनगर से कोई आया अपना गाड़ी लेके वापस जाएगा उसको रहने का जरूरत नहीं वो छह हजार किसी को देगा नहीं सो वी नीट हमारे पास कौन सा होना चाहिए हमारे पास ऐसा टूरिस्ट होना चाहिए जो कि छह हजार स्पेंड करे ये छह हजार स्पेंड कौन करेगा मैं जब रिसर्च कर रहा था इको टूरिज्म पे मैंने कश्मीर पे रिसर्च किया है स्टूडेंट्स के लिए मैं बता रहा हूँ मैंने कश्मीर पे रिसर्च किया है मैंने देखा अपने रिसर्च में जो भी इको टूरिज्म आप लोग जानते होंगे गंगबल ये सारा लेक्स के बारे में सुना होगा सोनमर्ग आप जानते हैं आपके बगल में सोनमर्ग है सब कुछ है तो वहां से वो ऊपर जो चले जाते हैं निचनाई और ये सब जगह पे चले जाते हैं वहां से फिर आपके कारगिल का रास्ता भी है आगे से फिर लद्दाख भी पहुंच जाते हैं 
तो वहां पे मैंने देखा कि जितने सारे टूरिस्ट आते थे बाहर से आते थे या इंडिया से आते थे वो हाई स्पेंडर्स होते थे हाई स्पेंडर माने जो पैसा ज्यादा खर्च करने वाले होते थे और एजुकेशन बैकग्राउंड उनका अच्छा था ठीक है वो पैसा खर्च करने वाले एजुकेशन बैकग्राउंड उनका अच्छा था और ज्यादातर मैंने देखा कि जॉब या तो सरकारी नौकरी कर रहे हैं या इवन प्राइवेट में भी आ, काम कर रहे हैं तो कहने का मतलब ये है कि टूरिस्ट कम आएगा लेकिन स्पेंड ज्यादा करेगा सो so, अगर मास टूरिस्ट की हम बात करेंगे अगर एक दिन में सौ लोग संस्कार आएंगे तो हो सकता है अगर वो दस हजार फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर वो दस हजार रुपए एक दिन में खर्च करेगा तो हो सकता है सिर्फ चार इको टूरिस्ट संस्कार आ सकते हैं और वो बीस हजार रुपए खर्च कर सकते हैं एक दिन में तो अब बेटर कौन रहेगा बेटर वो रहेगा कि ये रहेगा बेटर हमारे पास ये रहेगा और अगर ये पांच छह दिन के लिए बैठ गया अगर पांच छह दिन रहा वहां पे मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फाइव डेज मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ट्वेंटी वो कितना हो रहा है तकरीबन एक लाख के करीब वो हो जाएगा बट द थिंग इज दैट हमको उनको देना क्या है जो कि इको टूरिज्म का बेसिक मकसद है मुद्दा है इको टूरिज्म हम उनको देंगे क्या क्या हम कोका कोला देंगे क्या हम ए लगाएंगे लद्दाख में आपको हैरत होगा ये सुन के मेरी बात कि मैंने कश्मीर में बहुत सारे लोगों को देखा है मॉस्क में और बहुत सारी जगह पे ए लगाया है आई डिड नॉट फाइंड की ए लगाने का क्या मतलब है सो so, मेरे एक टीचर कहा करते थे कि जब भी कोई टूरिस्ट किसी जगह पे जाएगा वहां का असली चीज उसको दिखाना चाहिए नकली चीज नहीं दिखाना चाहिए ठीक है लद्दाख में हमारा असली चीज क्या है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपका लोकल लोकल टीम है जैसे हम कश्मीर की बात करेंगे हम लोकल में कश्मीर में नमक की चाय पीते हैं नून चाय आप भी पीते होंगे सो वी शुड ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड दिस टू द टूरिस्ट हमें उनको कोका कोला कॉफी वगैरह देने का जरूरत नहीं है हमें अपना लोकल चीज देने का जरूरत है जब लोकल चीज हम देंगे तो उससे लोकल्स का एम्प्लॉयमेंट मैं एक और एग्जांपल बताता हमारे यहाँ पे तमिलनाडु का आपने नाम सुना है तमिलनाडु ठीक है चेन्नई मैं एक बार गया था कोडाई कनाल एक जगह हिल स्टेशन है मैं वहां पे गया था तो वहां पे मैंने देखा कि लोकल लोग स्वीट्स बनाते हैं मिठाई बनाते हैं चॉकलेट्स बनाते हैं सब लोकल क्योंकि वो एरिया कॉफी के लिए फेमस है कॉफी वहां से आती है जो साउथ का एरिया है वहां से कॉफी आती है तो सारी चीजें जो बनाते थे वो लोकल होती मिठाई से लेके टॉफी से लेके कुछ भी चीज हो वो सारा लोकल उससे क्या होगा लोकल्स को एम्प्लॉयमेंट ज्यादा मिलेगा और हमारा जो रिसोर्सेज है वो रिसोर्सेज प्रिजर्व हो जाएगा कंजर्वेशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेज हो जाएगा हमारा हेरिटेज बचेगा हमारा कल्चर बचेगा अदरवाइज क्या होता है We have in tourism हमारे पास एक वर्ड यूज होता है सॉरी हमारे पास एक वर्ड यूज होता है हम कहते हैं हिप्पी कल्चर जब बाहर के फॉरिनर्स जब आते हैं हम उनको वी स्टार्ट इमिटेटिंग डेम नहीं हमको ऐसा नहीं करना है हमें चाहिए कि वो हमारे कल्चर को इमिटेट करे तो उसके लिए हमें चाहिए लद्दाख जैसी डेस्टिनेशन पे कश्मीर जैसी जगह पे जहाँ पे टूरिज्म बहुत कम समय के लिए होता है अभी हिमाचल प्रदेश से जाएंगे लद्दाख अटल टनल के थ्रू जाएंगे तो बहुत सारे टूरिस्ट यहाँ से जाते हैं हिमाचल प्रदेश साल भर खुला रहता है तो उन्होंने जिस तरह से मेंटेन किया हुआ है अपनी डेस्टिनेशन को हो सकता है हमें उतने तक पहुंचने में टाइम लगेगा लेकिन पहुंचेंगे तो हमें भी चाहिए कि हम उस तरह से करें और टूरिस्ट हमारे यहाँ ज्यादा से ज्यादा आए लेकिन उसके लिए हमें मास टूरिज्म नहीं करना है हमें इको टूरिज्म का प्रमोशन करना है इको टूरिज्म का जो मैंने बता दिया कि मेन पॉइंट क्या है प्रिजर्वेशन और कंजर्वेशन ऑफ द रिसोर्सेज और प्रमोशन ऑफ द लोकल लोकल चीजें लोकल चीजें प्रमोट करना जिसमें से लोकल्स को भी एम्प्लॉयमेंट मिलेगा और हमें बाहर से एम्प्लॉय बाहर से लोगों को लाने की बाहर से लाने की जरूरत कब पड़ती है अगर सोनमर्ग से आप कभी जाते होंगे बाय रोड श्रीनगर की तरफ आते होंगे आपने सोनमर्ग में देखा होगा कितने बड़े बड़े होटल्स आए हैं सिंध नदी पे ठीक है वो होटल सब वो क्लियर होना चाहिए बात समझनी चाहिए वो सब होटल्स गलत होटल्स बनाए गए सिंध नदी पे जो बनाया गया है होटल सारा का सारा गलत है हमें वो नहीं चीज करना है ठीक है हमें हमें क्या करना है लोकल जो अपने पास मकान है जैसे टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट आजकल पैसा भी देता है जब जम्मू कश्मीर लद्दाख एक ही स्टेट था अभी तो अलग अलग हो गया यूनियन टेरिटरी बन गया तो पहले इको टूरिज्म पॉलिसी था पूरा जम्मू कश्मीर के लिए अगर आप वेबसाइट पे जाएंगे वाइल्ड लाइफ डिपार्टमेंट जो पुराना जम्मू कश्मीर का आप देखेंगे उसमें इको टूरिज्म पॉलिसी डॉक्यूमेंट मिलेगा आप लोगों को अभी तक वो इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं हुआ है 
तो लद्दाख क्योंकि अब एक यूनियन टेरिटरी अलग हो गया जम्मू कश्मीर अलग हो गया तो अभी बहुत सारी एम्पल अपॉर्चुनिटीज है लद्दाख में कि हम इस कॉन्सेप्ट को प्रमोट कर सकते हैं और इस ट्रेनिंग का यही मकसद है कि आप लोगों को ट्रेनिंग दिया जाए आप लोग छेड़खानी भी कर रहे हैं स्लाइड्स के साथ वो भी करो कोई बात नहीं बस आप ट्रेनिंग भी ले लो आप सोचो कि हमें जो है आ, हमारे अपनी जगह पे इको टूरिज्म को प्रमोट करना है और उसके लिए जैसे वीरेंद्र जी या बहुत सारे लोग ये जो काम करते हैं बहुत सारे बड़े बड़े लोग बुलाते हैं आप उनको लेके उनका हेल्प लेके अपनी जगह पे इस चीज को प्रमोट करेंगे और अगर हम फिर मौका मिला मिलने का उस टाइम में आपसे पूछूंगा कि इको टूरिज्म का मतलब क्या होता है और उस टाइम में ये भी मतलब चाहूंगा कि स्लाइड्स के साथ ज्यादा छेड़खानी ना करें ठीक है सो इट वाज ऑल अबाउट इको टूरिज्म के बारे में आज इतना ही और जब फिर से मौका मिलेगा तो उस टाइम अभी छेड़खानी रुक गई शायद थक गए थे सब लोग <laughs> तो अगली बार फिर हम इसके बारे में बात करेंगे अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन पूछना है या कुछ और चीज पूछना है आप मुझसे पूछ सकते अगर किसी स्टूडेंट का कोई क्वेश्चन वेरी एक्टिव वीरेंद्र जी लद्दाखी स्टूडेंट्स आर वेरी एक्टिव यस 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 हम लोग भी इतना एक्टिव नहीं है <laughs> अब हमें भी थोड़ा एक्टिव होना पड़ेगा इनके साथ इनकी दौड़ के साथ भागना पड़ेगा और इनको जी, पकड़ना जी, पड़ेगा जी एनी uh, no क्वेश्चन uh, कुछ uh, 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 अच्छा थैंक यू ओके ओके ठीक है ठीक है इट्स ओके इट्स ओके थैंक यू ज्यादा करने का जरूरत नहीं था मैं सोचा था क्वेश्चन होगा सो शैल आई स्टॉप दिन नाउ यस 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 ओके सो स्टूडेंट्स आप सबको डॉक्टर uh, इकबाल की प्रेजेंटेशन uh, उनका लेक्चर बहुत पसंद आया होगा कोई मुझे बोल रहा है सर आप कहाँ से हो सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट वीरेंद्र जी मैं जिसने भी कहा है फयाज अहमद है कोई स्टूडेंट है आई गेस मैं गांधरबल डिस्ट्रिक्ट से हूँ फयाज गांधरबल डिस्ट्रिक्ट को जानते हो ना हाँ ओके ठीक है ठीक है वीरेंद्र जी प्लीज जी अब देखिए डॉक्टर इकबाल कहाँ से कहाँ पहुंच गए गांधरबल से उड़ीसा पहुंच गए उड़ीसा से लद्दाख पहुंच गए और लद्दाख से आज जंसकार भी पहुंच गए थे जंसकार भी हम लोग पहुंच गए <laughs> तो डॉक्टर इकबाल थैंक यू वेरी मच स्टूडेंट्स के बहुत सारे थैंक्स मैसेजेस आ रहे हैं और भी मैसेजेस हैं तो इनके जो मैसेजेस हैं उनको मैं सॉर्ट आउट करूंगा और आपके पास मैं एक बार भेजूंगा अगर आपको अपना कॉन्टेक्ट बच्चों के साथ शेयर करना है तो प्लीज यू आर व्हाट्सएप नंबर मैं यहाँ पे लिखता हूँ अगर किसी को भी मुझसे कुछ चाहिए मतलब आई मीन टू से हेल्प स्टडीज के रिलेटेड आई एम ऑलवेज हेयर सो आई एम ऑल्सो द कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ द टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट इन अवर यूनिवर्सिटी मैं किसको ये करूंगा एवरी वन इन द वेटिंग रूम एवरी वन इन दिन आई एम राइटिंग माई फोन नंबर देर जी मैं थोड़ा शॉर्ट ही रहा आज मैंने जगह पता था कि आप ये लोग बहुत बोर हो जाएंगे ज्यादा कुछ होने से तो नेक्स्ट टाइम इफ आई गेट अ चांस और भी बातें होंगी मैंने अपना नंबर लिख लिया है दिस इज माय व्हाट्सएप नंबर मेरा ईमेल आईडी डी वहां पर लिखा था मेरा पहले प्रेजेंटेशन फिर भी मैं यहाँ पे लिखता हूँ ओके इट इज देयर सो यू कैन जस्ट Uh, कोई इंस्टाग्राम आईडी भी मांग रहे हैं इंस्टाग्राम ज्यादा मैं यूज नहीं करता हूँ बाद में वो भी दूंगा ठीक है फिलहाल व्हाट्सएप ले लो मे बी इंस्टाग्राम इन सेकंड सेशन नेक्स्ट ओके सेकंड सेशन यस फेसबुक इंस्टाग्राम सेकंड सेशन ओके बस बच्चों को कुछ तो क्यूरोसिटी होनी चाहिए या 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 इट शुड बी देयर और यू अंडरस्टैंड इट इन अ बेटर वे और डॉक्टर इकबाल का जो नेक्स्ट सेशन है वो आज के सेशन से भी ज्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग है जिसका टॉपिक है इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ इको टूरिज्म एंड फ्यूचर ऑफ इको टूरिज्म तो uh, मुझे लगता है कि आज जितने भी स्टूडेंट्स स्किप uh, किया है उनको कहीं ना कहीं से पता चलेगा डॉक्टर इकबाल के बारे में और uh, वो नेक्स्ट सेशन अटेंड करने के लिए uh, 
पूरा बिगिनर लेवल कोर्स अटेंड करेंगे बिकॉज डॉक्टर इकबाल नेक्स्ट सेशन इज इन इंटरमीडिएट सेशन एंड इफ यू क्रॉस इफ यू पास द बिगिनर लेवल ऑफ द प्रोग्राम only then you would be able to join the intermediate so to attend the dr ikbal's next session you have to attend the all session of beginner level and uh, i'm sure uh, this session will really help you to become uh, an eco guide because in our program it is not not just about uh, the tourism it is also about medical it is also about culture it is also about language history everything so uh, thank you very much and uh, um, students can leave uh, their queries uh, on the chat box we will try to give you the best answer and there is some question like uh, to share the ppt or video so we will sort out the issue those are not able to attend the class is many of the student facing mobile connectivity issue it is because of the internet i'm sure and uh, some of students mobile uh, get hang because of consuming a lot of energy data everything so don't get panic don't get tension just switch off your mobile and restart so that is the best way to connect with us and uh, thank you dr ikbal for giving your time uh, in opening session also and this live session also and we are hoping to see you uh, again when uh, with uh, in our next program uh, i thanks uh, to uh, mr padmanam gel ajita uh, who is sitting almost 6000 km far from here uh, and i thanks to all the participants who has joined uh, uh, the first session i know uh, right right now um uh, kargil and lehe is very cold uh, i heard it is in minus so i will not take uh, much time and we will conclude uh, our uh, today's session here टाइम will start our session by 6 or maybe few minutes past by 6 so try to be there before time and the very important thing uh admitting in the classroom with your roll number and your name as i can see there are many students like sadiq farha khan vivo y 5 il and many people they are they haven't entered their uh, roll number so i am not allowing them to enter in class sorry i am extremely sorry uh so you can so they can come tomorrow or maybe some other class so uh, all of you thank you for joining uh, today's session it is a first class and uh, uh, i hope slowly 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 you will come in motion to get used to with this uh, online session if you have any question please email whatsapp or drop your message here now uh, it is time to say goodbye julie and uh, salam to everyone okay good night